So I'm standing here on the half-frozen Lake Winnipesaukee in the middle of the shortest ice fishing season in recent years. I'm Travis Warren, and this is Impact. Don't let that flannel fool you. The guy in the back of that snowmobile is slowly but surely wetting his pants. I am about to go ice fishing for the very first time, and I'm thinking about headlines like these. 2016 has been one of the warmest winters on record. I'm here with renowned ice fisherman Tim Moore to investigate how climate change is impacting his craft. And lucky for me, I'm here on a day where the ice is about 10 inches thinner than it should be. So last time we met, you talked about, when you were younger, about 10 years back, there were these giant ice fishing communities, effectively, with bob houses that were there for the entire season. And now that's not the case. We've gone from back when I was a kid to having hundreds of bob houses out there. And last winter, there were three. This year, I don't think they haven't put any on. I don't think it froze enough. 10 years ago, caught all the smelt I wanted. You know, when there were hundreds of houses out there. Before our climate became so unpredictable, the kind of ice fishing that Tim grew up on was a staple in New Hampshire. The ice was thick, the snow was knee deep, and people would come from across the country to form what were essentially cities on the ice. Just across the way on the eastern side of the lake, pilots often fly recon missions to get a bird's eye view of the new and destructive norm that climate change is creating. Where you'd usually find a glossy sheet of unblemished ice, today you'll find a patchwork of breaks, hairline cracks, and large expanses of open water. Just a few weeks later, these conditions would lead state officials to declare an ice out for the 2016 season, the earliest recorded ice out in New Hampshire history. You know what? Nice and easy. Oh, oh hey, look at that. yellow perch. So what, what, what is this here? It's a fish. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I figured that. It's a yellow perch. What kind is it? Yellow perch? Yellow perch, yep. They have beautiful colors in New Hampshire this time of year, those nice orange fins. Yeah. I mean, you said it yourself, I mean, last year, up till March 31st, you were out here ice fishing, and then now it's, it's March 4th, and we are the only people out on this lake right now. I mean, how does that impact you, given what you do for a living? Twelve more charters that I'm supposed to run this year, and right. I'm going to have to postpone them all until next season. I mean, last year we had, we had a lot of snow, we had a lot of ice, it was cold. Yeah. I mean, so so the, the, the problem isn't, isn't years like this every year, the problem is unpredictability. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Being a sponsored fisherman, Tim is able to make up his income through his work reviewing and promoting the gear he uses, which is great for Tim, but most in his line of work aren't quite so lucky. As the climate becomes increasingly erratic, many fishermen, guides, as well as the bait shops they depend on have had an increasingly hard time making the ends meet. One of those shops is AJ's Bait and Tackle, a family-owned bait shop that's been serving Winnipesaukee for over 20 years now. As AJ himself knows firsthand, unpredictable winners mean uncertain bottom lines anything else. If you're gonna go, you have to look the part. What's that? It's flannel camouflage. It's so other patterns can't see me in the woods. How would you compare this winter to the winters you've seen over that course of your 20 years? This winter compared to other winters has been probably the worst or the warmest winter we've had. If you in, you in call the it the worst, flat out the worst. Flat out the worst. Is it hard to you know guess at what products we need to carry and how much? So a lot of guessing work. A lot of guessing work. As we've seen, the consequences of climate's influence on ice fishing affects more than just those who are standing out in the ice. Like a stone cast into the water, the repercussions of our actions ripple deeply into every facet of life in the Grand State. Something like 97 percent of all fishing games budget comes from license sales, hunting sales, fishing license sales. Yep. Um, and that money, you know, it funds the agency, but it also funds conservation efforts. Yes. What that is, is that's a federal match, dollar for dollar match from license sales. Right. So our Let's Go Fishing program is, right. is all federally funded through volunteer hours. Uh, you know, if there's no ice, there are no volunteer hours. So you just rattle off about five or ten different things that climate change is indirectly impacting that I, I didn't know before. I mean, people think about, you know, melting sea ice and polar bears, but it's really, it's, it's, it's it's the local stuff. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And you can worry about, you know, melting sea ice. We should worry about yeah. melting sea ice, but, you know, you want to keep your own house in order, and we've got problems locally here because of climate change. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's outrageous. It's, yeah. I, I am very optimistic. I think New Hampshire is, is ahead of the curve. I think New Hampshire is going to continue to cut carbon, so I feel really good about that. <laughs>